player when you finally learn your um, closed or movable scale positions on the fingerboard so you can play all across the neck in various keys very powerful actually for example uh, a typical scale position might start here on the D string of the fifth fret and this is for the single string style not melodics where you're playing cross string this is more for playing guitar style We talk about all of these scale positions, by the way, in our lesson, Scales for Improvisation. And that actually kind of is a predicate for this lesson. You may want to go to jamalong.org, search Scales for Improvisation, and that's a massive video lesson with every single scale position up and down the fingerboard. Once you have most of your scale positions under your belt, then you can start to think about how to turn them into licks and fancy improvisation. Because as we talk about many times in our scale lessons, playing ascension and dissension is not your friend. You want to have musical phrases coming out of those positions. And this is what you'll get by learning these licks in this lesson. So take that basic scale position uh, shown in the key of G. If you learn a scale-based lick out of that position, that means wherever you are on the fingerboard, whatever key you're in, whether it's A or C, that same lick will apply because it's built out of that position. So let's take lick number one in this lesson, and it sounds like this. A nice bluesy, bluegrassy sound. But what's beautiful about that is it's not just in a vacuum, it's out of that position. So ideally, when you're playing that scale, at any point, you can go and then back to the scale. Now we have the magic flow. Now you're talking about putting in quotes of licks into your scale flow, and that's a whole other beast than just trying to improvise out of your scale patterns. So let's show you a couple of licks that you'll learn out of the eight licks in the uh, Licks from Scale Positions lesson. And once again, you can get the complete lesson in the links below. This is an audio lesson, meaning you get all the auto tracks and tab and backing tracks for only 20 bones. Um, can't beat that. So basically, let's take lick number one that works for major slash minor shape number one. And that sounds like this. <laughs> Let's take lick number two that works out of the scale position here related to the D position and the full scale will sound like this. So we're assuming that the major root, the plus, is our home here. So if we're in this scale position, we have this lick. Which is really cool it has some blues tones it has some punchy single note runs and so basically now anytime you find yourself in this D position based scale and you know you can slide in here and do the lick 
once again, that magic will happen. So we're going to improvise now, showing you just with two of these licks out of the eight we give you in this lesson, just learning one or two of them will give you a whole new color to your improv because you have these quotes that you can spit out whenever you recognize that position. So once again, lick number one. Lick number two. Okay, we're gonna try that along with the backing track which you'll also get in the lesson so you can practice along with the sound of a real bluegrass band. position, what we call major minor two in the charts that come with this lesson, and I'm going to insert lick number two. I'm going to shut up and just play banjo now. You get the drill. I'm noodling out of the scale, which we teach you how to do in the scales for improvisation lesson, and then I'm inserting that lick when I come to the target notes of that slide. That's where the lick starts. Remember, the lick's going to sound like this. scale. Here we go. tracks that come with this lesson with that endless G groove going on and on and on. You have all the practice time you want to play the scale, get the lick in, go back to the scale. This is real magic. And also on top of the fact that you can throw them into your improv, you can use these eight awesome single string licks in any key to play as parts of your arrangements to common songs. Let's say you're playing Nine Pound Hammer. <laughs> I could start out the second half of that break with scale lick number two. So all of a sudden, you start to have that really cool flow where you're inserting licks into your arrangements for leads. One of the really cool aspects about the companion lesson to this one, the Scales for Improvisation, is that all of the scale positions we teach you are shown with the overlapping major and relative minor. That means you have two root notes in the scale position. So for example, let's take that first position here down at the fifth fret. The whole shape sounds like this. If you start from the G note, guess what? It's a G major scale. If you start from the E note, or as we show in the diagram in the lesson, a minus symbol, the minor root, you get the E minor, the relative minor. So one position is twice as useful now if you understand the relative major and minor, and we teach that in the lesson. So for example, anytime you play a C major scale, it's also an A minor scale. Anytime you play a D major scale, it's also a B minor scale. You might want to memorize the relative minors of each key, and that way, you'll have two scales out of each position. That being said, let's look at the E minor version of that first scale position. We have licks for that as well. Here's the really cool lick we teach you in this lesson for E minor. Super cool, nice and punchy, one blues note in there, that flat five. So if you're playing along, that's a great way to start a solo. Let's say you're playing Blackberry Blossom, and you go, here we go. I could use that lick three times 
to get the bridge for Blackberry Blossom. It works like magic. So let's get an example of playing along with the E minor backing track that you'll get in this lesson and playing that E minor scale. And then I'm going to fit in that lick and you'll hear it when it happens because it sounds like this. Here we go with the flow, starting with the scale. patch once you can fit that lick into your E minor jams. Lick five in this lesson, which once again you'll get the tablature and the audio to learn it for reals in the lesson. Click on the link below to get the full lesson. Um, basically is a really cool multiple note lick out of this second position in E minor. So we slide up, play a bunch of E notes, which is a cool blues technique, and then drop back. That's a great sound right there. And then we do a little curly cue and then land the lick. So the whole lick, which is taught as lick number five in this lesson, sounds like this. And once again, it comes out of that major minor scale position number two in the minor key, which starts with this root and will sound like this going all through the position. Okay, so we're going to do some improv, we're going to bump up the tempo, and remember all of the audio tracks in our lessons have adjustable tempos. You can make it slower or faster to your heart's delight, and that's the beauty of having tempo control is you can notch it up and keep track with the speedometer at what level you're at when you're practicing so you can make sure you're staying clean. Remember, it's not so much about playing fast as it is playing clean. Okay, lecture over. Let's go ahead and play lick number five for E minor out of the E minor scale position, back and forth from the scale improv to the lick as you should be practicing. right in. I'm, I was jamming out on the E minor scale, doing whatever. And remember, when you're jamming out on the scale, improvising as it were, everybody does that differently. I've got my phrases, you've got your phrases. We just want to keep that stream of notes, that flow going. So I was flowing in E minor. And then when I got to the target note, which was the seven to nine slide, I put in the lick. So here's my scale. of all of this stuff is I didn't really use any open strings, maybe by mistake one or two, but that makes these movable positions. That's atomic in its significance. You can move them anywhere you want. As soon as you get that lick, now I move up to G minor. I move to D minor. B minor. So they're so useful. They are so useful. You're playing Shady Grove in A minor. I could start out with that lick up here. A whole riff right there for Shady Grove based on that one lick. Now to demonstrate the power of having movable licks like this, I'm going to move through the various keys in the backing tracks shown in this lesson. Um, because we supply backing tracks for G, A, C, D, E, and F, as well as several minor keys. Um, and you can see how that same lick can be moved to any key once you get it under your belt. So let's go back to lick number one. And let's play that in a couple of keys. Here's G. Now let's do 
it in A. How about C? to F. And of course the octave lower version once you get high enough. And for extra measure, the last three licks in the lesson, licks six, seven, and eight, are blues, which are really, really cool to play. Um, for example, lick six is a blues lick based on the blues scale. Learn those scale positions in this lesson as well. We show you the charts for all the scale positions. Here's your blues scale position. And the lick out of that will sound like this. Really cool sound. So you can put that once again in any key to match any song. Lick seven is a snarling blues lick that features a triplet. Really cool to add to any jam that has a blues feel to it. And then the last lick, lick eight, is a really awesome blues lick that features playing the blues out of the bar position, blues scale. And it sounds like this. One of my personal favorites. So handy, so easy, and so movable to any key. So if you're an intermediate banjo player and you're looking to increase your skills in improvisation, which is the final frontier, get this lesson. It's the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend. It will get you eight licks with tablature and standard notation. It will get you the audio tracks of each lick played back and forth from the back up to the lick so you can practice playing your scales with it. And it will get you a bunch of backing tracks in different keys, major and minor, so you can practice moving these licks around the entire neck. This is an amazing workout and it will add to your improv so you'll be turning heads at the next jam session. So pick this up, get to picking, we'll see you at Jam Along.